let's jump in. I'm going to try to make this pretty snappy. This message will be specific, so you will know in the beginning if this is or is not your jam. Okay, the weather could be really gloomy where you are, though you could be enjoying it. It could like really fit your mood. Let me turn everything down. Okay. Can you guys hear me okay? Hi, guys. Hey, everybody. Welcome. Okay, so what I'm getting for you guys is you're about to blow... You are about to blow a freaking gasket. And it's going to take everything in your power to stay calm. Yes, it is the first day of you know what. And it could have already been quite the debacle. And you guys are going to be going down this rabbit hole of a different life. Some of you guys are going to be moving. Some of you guys are going to be getting a lot of recognition, and some of you guys are going to be going through changes in your relationship. Either way, I'm seeing that there's going to be a lot of passion here, like you are not going to settle for anything. And everyone that is in your way better move, okay? Everyone that is in your way that is trying to act funny, anybody that is in your way that has been giving you a hard time or thinks it's funny to give you a hard time, they better freaking move because it is just not... It's not a good idea. Like you're not, you're the wrong one to mess with right now. You feel what I'm saying in every sense of the word. So the spotlight is on you right now. And there are some things that were stagnant that are about to be removed. So whatever feelings you feel right now, you are on the verge of a breakthrough so just let those feelings, just feel them. If you feel like crying right now, cry. If you feel like laughing right now, laugh. It's going to be a wonky little ride this first week. Okay, whoever I'm speaking to, you are an earth angel. You are chosen. You have always been special. You guys just know that there's something about you that you have a big purpose. You're going places. So if you guys are new here, I'm your bestie on the internet. Duh. I am your favorite YouTuber. I am your spiritual advisor. And your cosmic cheerleader. Grab whatever you be snacking on. Grab whatever you be sipping on. Grab whatever you be smoking on because I'm going in. There were a lot of people that are anticipating your next move, but you most of all. And... There's going to be this air of intimidation about you because you've had it up to here. You've had enough of certain things that you've been putting up with and you're just in this shit or get off the pot type of mentality. You're just not going to, you're not going to settle for anything less. Hi, Randon. Thank you for moderating. I'm going to it's going to be you guys are going to be introduced to new people or you could have recently been introduced to new people and these people are going to be helpful for you. Okay, you guys have um, new aid coming in. So let me try to clarify what that means. People that will jump at the fact or the chance to help you. Okay, I got this confirmation three times today. You guys are going to be seeing that people that are very slow to help you 
Not that you guys really want other people's help, but in this season, you will be needing others' help, unfortunately. And what you're going to be seeing is the people that aren't willing to rectify something, fix something, call it out, be accountable, they better freaking move. They better freaking move. People that are not willing to be accountable for mistakes that they make, hiccups that they make, you are, you're not going to have any tolerance for it. You will not be able to look up into the sky and have one fuck to give, one fuck to find for the people that are trying you in this transit. So anyone that like, say you have an issue and you're just like going through it because that's what this season is about right now is really figuring out divine timing, how to slow certain things down, how to pause, how to break because there's going to be delays and obstacles and there's no one that pivots like you so affirm it below I nailed it the first time no one pivots like me you guys are very intuitive and so you're going to be getting the download seconds before it happens minutes before it happens like say you're driving and there's somebody behind you that's acting a fool you'll have a feeling to swerve move change lanes and then you're going to see this person slam into somebody else that is how you're going to be moving the next couple of weeks with people helping you. There are people in this, this week and in this season that are going to be an accessory to the crime. Okay. They're supposed to be helping you with something um, or they're supposed to be a close friend or they're supposed to be a family member or they're supposed to be a bestie and they had a part in something going awry. They are either going to cop to it or they are not. And if they do not cop to it, sorry, does that make sense? You guys, it's Mercury. You guys already know. You guys know what I mean. They're either going to admit that they, they are an accessory to the, to the issue or they are going to deny, deny, deny. And anybody that denies with you, you've got a mouthful of words for them. You are not going to let people deny or back out or renege. You refuse to let anybody do that in this season. If they are supposed to be a ride or die, if they are supposed to be your person, if you're supposed to be dating, you're not going to stand for that at all. They know that they are accountable for their part. Okay. They know that they're accountable for their part. Let me give you guys an example. I have people that I work with on my business and there are certain people that will know that they are accountable for a certain job, for a certain task. And if they don't admit that they were wrong in that task and how they're how soon they're going to rectify it, then that's a problem. Do you understand what I mean? Like, I've had people that I've fired. I fired four people last year having to do with my business and being an entrepreneur. And... It was annoying that I had to fire them because they don't take accountability. I probably fired more people than that. But either way, there is, sorry, let me scoot my chair. There are people that when something went wrong or something, there was an issue, they didn't take accountability for that and did not give me a timeline for when it would be rectified. That is unacceptable. Okay, so all 2023, you guys were cleaning house and it was like put up or shut up on what you're going to deal with. This year, the people that are around you in this season, if they don't admit that they have a part, they're going to wish they not never met you because you are going to take them down the rabbit hole of accountability. Okay, affirm it below. I am taking people down the rabbit hole of accountability. So the people that I replaced, okay, so I fired four people last year and then I replaced them, replaced them in December and in January. The people that I have in place now, when there is an issue or there is a mistake, they're like, Brit, my bad. I can fix it by this date. I'm so sorry. Let me discount this. Let me change the price. Let me make it right. I'm so sorry. So even though last year it, I cried I was sad. I, the people that I had been in business with were like my family. They were like sisters to me. 
and they just didn't, in the end, they just couldn't, wouldn't take any accountability for them partying too hard, coming to work hungover, um, calling out, canceling, not taking accountability. So the people that I have in place now, they don't do that. They're just as responsible. They have the gravitas. You are only attracting people that have the gravitas, the vigor, the strength, and the seriousness. So let God, let the universe show you who that is, okay? I have another example. The last time I went to jail, okay, been to jail many times, and especially as an addict and an alcoholic, the last time I went in, one of my best friends, one of my guy friends, Knew I was in there before anybody else knew that I was in there. Okay. And he was like one of the only phone numbers that I had memorized because he was a former boss of mine. We had dated for a time or two and we just ended up being best friends. Well, I'm finally like getting out like almost a month later of being in jail and being in county. Okay. Being in freaking county for almost a month is not fun. I'd rather be in prison because they've got ice cream there and better commissary. But anyways, that's, a, that's, a, that's another, that's a whole other thing. That's a whole other thing. I had been calling this motherfucker for three weeks. He did not answer the phone. Now, where I live in the States, they have this thing. It's called the Slammer Magazine. And people that just get locked up, they go into this little magazine and it's at your local Circle K or your local 7-Eleven. And he had gone out partying the first weekend that I was locked up. And his brother is checking out at the counter and he's like, oh my gosh, isn't that Brittany? And he's like, oh, it is. And proceeds to not answer the phone for me. Okay? Proceeds to not answer the phone for me. So not only am I at the shittiest phone in my dorm, in my cell block, because all the felons and like more serious offenders, they know which phones are the good phones. And then, you know, if you're just the newbie in the block, on the block, in the dorm, you're getting the shitty phone. So it's like, I need you to pick up this phone. What are you doing? Finally, I get out. First person I call is my alleged bestie. And he's like, what? What do you need? I'm like, I need you to come get me out of this shithole, my dude. <laughs> That's what I need. And he's like, oh, oh my gosh, like it's late. I'm like, we normally stay up really late. It's like one right now. Like, dude, I just got out. Like, please come get me. Please come get me. And he made a big stink about it. And that wasn't something that he would normally do. And that really hurt me to the core. He comes and gets me, makes a big deal about it. And then proceeds to tell me how he already knew the whole time I was in there that I was there. Knew that I was in there. People that don't take accountability with you, you got one in the hopper for their ass. You got one in the chamber. You got one locked and loaded for them. Your words are going to shake them to their core. They're going to wish they not never met you. Trust me, the people that I fired last year that I loved dearly, they wish that they didn't do what they did, okay? And that mother effer, that mother effer that didn't answer the phone for the last time that I was locked up when I needed him the most because the judge was so pissed at me. He was like, I'm gonna leave you in here after my arraignment. Like, I'm thinking, oh, I'm gonna be in here 48 hours. I'm gonna get out. No. Judge was like, you got to see your judge. Wait, seven days. I had to wait a whole other week to see my judge at an arraignment. Judge is like, I don't like you. I'm tired of seeing your face. So you're going to stay in here. Because I'm tired of having you comply. So having you locked up is a lot easier. So just to tell somebody like, hey, I'm in here. Like, I just need people to know where I'm at. People that did you like this in this season, they're going to try to peek their head. Like, hey, um, how are you doing? They might be creeping you guys from fake accounts because you might have blocked all of them. All the people from your past that did not want to admit that they were an accessory, that they had some part, some part of accountability. You are going to have nothing but a glow up, nothing but a boss up, nothing but a that's dirt on my shoulder for their ass. Are you picking up what I'm putting down? 
this person that didn't answer the phone, they stalked me because I was, after that situation, I was done. Like, and I had known that person for years. Cut them off with the quickness. When I cut you off, you're dead to me. You are dead to me. Don't send me friend request after friend request after friend. Don't do it. Don't do it. And so he tried to stalk me like at softball, even though I was engaged, tried to stalk me just wherever while I was married. And I'm like, dude, I'm not, I'm never coming back to be your friend. Like uh, when I need you and you continuously just do whatever, this is where you guys are at. The people that happened, that this happened with in the seasons past, they are going to be trying to pop in like, oh my gosh, and pretending like nothing happened. This is going to be really hard for you to be like, oh yeah, all is forgiven. I have t completely forgotten. And a lot of you guys have forgiven these people already. Okay, a lot of these people you have forgiven already, but you haven't forgotten and you're not just going to like um, reconcile with them. Okay, a lot of people I cut off, I cut off my family, I cut off my siblings, I cut off my parents, I cut off damn near everybody because I was their constant scapegoat. I was their constant, like, trash can to kick around. And so, six years ago, I said, enough is enough. I'm not going to be around for this. I'm not going to be around where you guys make me feel like crap every day of the week. It's not fair. It's not right. And I'm done. I'm done working on this relationship. So you guys are going to be seeing in this new season where people do have your back and believe it the first time. Because what it's going to remind you of or what I want you to think about is all the people in the past that didn't pick up the phone and they knew you were calling didn't answer your message and they knew that that you needed them so in that remember that they torched that bridge okay you just walked away but they torched that bridge you feel me so don't let them make you feel bad or try to guilt you or goad you into um bending your knee and groveling for their friendship it's not happening Right now is the season where you really see who your ride or dies are. And um, you're about to blow. And I put it this way specifically because you are about to blow in, in, in different ways. You are about to blow up and you are about to blow a gasket. You are about to blow up, bestie. Affirm it below. It's about to blow. It's about to go down. I can't. You guys are going to be seeing like, okay, so one of the people that I recently hired, mistakes happened this morning and it was unfortunate, but guess what? It's going to be rectified within the week. If that had been another employee that I had, it would have, it would have been, it wouldn't have even been rectified for like a month and they wouldn't have taken accountability for doing it wrong. Like, why do I have to tell you that you're doing it wrong? You knew that you did it wrong. I said what I said when I said it. Don't let them make you feel bad, okay? The people in your new season, be grateful for them. Even though I know you don't like getting help, I know you don't like asking for help, be grateful that they are not the old people that you used to have in your life. You know what I mean? So it's going to be you and the new besties, your new squad against the world. And though you might be bummed that some of these obstacles are coming into place, you get the flat tire, your friend is coming, you have a friend coming, and the other friends that wouldn't show up, or the other people that are in the current day that don't show up, you have something for them. You have something for them, okay? Let's see what else is going on. I'm going to try to not keep you guys here too long. Yeah, it's about to go down. Thank you, Danielle. Literally, these people, they always knew that you were special. And in this season, in this transit, they're going to try to pop back up. And it's a no. These people have definitely been keeping tabs on you. Secretly recording. You know what this reminds me of? The thing with Tom Sandoval. 
Okay, I know everybody hates him, and this is going to be unpopular opinion, but I don't care because I've been watching the show since it first came out because I'm also in the bar industry. And everybody makes mistakes, okay? Should he have recorded? Should he have screen recorded so-and-so? No, he should not have, but he took a cowardly approach to get out of a relationship, and we've all been there. And what pisses me off about the show is everybody there has cheated or been a mistress or somebody's Sancho. You feel me? They've been somebody's guma. And so somebody's been secretly recording you because you haven't been talking to them. Let me give you an example. If you guys are on Instagram, right, and you have an ex or one of these ex-friends watching your page, they're watching your story, they are recording it. Because they feel like they don't have a lifeline to you. They don't have a direct line to you anymore. So there are people recording your content. There are people recording your story. They're watching you on TikTok from a fake account. They're watching you on Facebook from a fake account. Okay, so you guys are not going to take any more public embarrassment from this person. And so what I'm getting is some of the mistakes that you've made in the past are going to rear their ugly head. You guys could have been arrested or there was some type of public embarrassment that you dealt with with some of these people that you used to love. You are only going to take so much. You are about to blow. You are only going to take so much. I'm the scapegoat. It's my fault. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Just like how much can Tom really be a Like we're on like a year since this scandal. A year. And how long is he going to be the most hated man in America? Everybody gets cheated on. Damn near everybody. It's not as public. It's not always somebody's best friend. Yes, that whole situation was facetious and quite an entanglement. But everyone deserves their comeback and everyone deserves a second chance. I will always be Team Tom. And people might not like me for that. I don't care because I, you guys know just as well as I do as an intuitive when people aren't happy. You guys see couples all the time. You're like, that is not a vibe. So you get them how you lose them and you lose them how you get them. They got into an entanglement when they were, when he was in another relationship and she lost him the same way. Okay. And now she's doing just fine, but she's really bitter. If you moved on, from a relationship, and this is what happened with your ex-friends. So hang hang tight with me for a second while I explain it. You guys had friends that you made mistakes with, whatever. They moved on. The people that you left behind, they wanted your energy. They wanted your time, but they didn't respect it. They didn't respect your boundaries. And then they moved on. Two of my exes, the one that didn't answer the phone, he had a baby right after that. So it didn't look like he was thinking about me, like you're chasing me, but you just had a child. My ex before that, I left him because I didn't want to be a drug addict anymore. I didn't want to, I didn't want to die a heroin addict. So I left and he had a baby right after. Don't be calling me and you got things to take care of. It's the same thing with Ariana. Okay, you understand what I'm, what I'm saying? She got into a relationship 10 days later. So why are you going for his jugular if you are so happy you've got another relationship? He seems very nice. Let's pay attention to that. Her thing is she has the public embarrassment and she cannot let go of this. And it it you can't wear bitter very well. Okay, you can wear intimidation all day, bestie, but we cannot wear bitter well. Are you picking up what I'm putting down? Okay. So for her, she is mad at Tom. This is my intuitive, you know, accounting or, you know, speculation of this for entertainment, entertainment purposes only. She's mad because he has not said on any type of footage, I, I know I messed up. I want her back. She's mad. That he doesn't want to come back as a whipped dog. You feel me? She's mad that 
Everyone should be making him the scapegoat. Everyone should be mean to him forever until the end of time. And it's one thing when your friend group is being mean to one person, but it's one thing when the whole world, I hate mob mentality. And for all of us that have ever been gang stalked, that have ever been mean girled, mean boyed, nobody likes that. Could you imagine dealing with it on a global level, global, that type of hate? You go out for a coffee, God forbid, and everyone's like, why are you wearing that shirt? Oh my gosh, you're the worm with the mustache. It's so mean to do for a year. Let it go. And then you have the other girl, the other accessory to the crime, not taking any accountability. She literally hid in a treatment center while he was getting all of this heat and hate from the whole world. He thought it was going to be him and her against the world. And he made a mistake and he's learning from that. But she went and hid. Now that she's out, she's like, oh, this is what happened. And she's joining in on that when she was fully aware. First of all, she was a fangirl. Let's start there. She was a fangirl. She found James, who's a DJ. And then she infiltrated herself into their circle. And so she just, she cannot handle as a former pageant winner. Somebody being in pageants, you want to look a certain way. No matter what, her being one of the most hated women in America or the world, she can't cope with that. It has to be somebody else's fault. So this is like my little, I don't know if it's like hypothesis, whatever, what have you. But whoever publicly embarrassed you, you are not going to like hate them forever. But you're sure as hell not going to be their friend. And so you guys are starting to see like these people moved on. Right after you, they burnt the bridge and you walked away, they moved on. But they want you to come back on bended knee. And that's what Ariana wants, you know, him to do. You need to be sorry until the end of time. And But she's also not, like, listening. So it's really cool to see all of this, like, play out. Because you see him, like, trying. But I'm glad that he's standing up for himself. Like, yes, I made a mistake. Everybody in this group has made a mistake. How long should I receive the hate? What I don't like is that they made merch, okay? If me and you, bestie, I'm talking to you, if me and you have a falling out and you go make merch about your hate for me, trust and believe we're going to have a catch me outside type of moment. You feel me? And that's what they were doing. They were making merch off of him and making content. And think, I think that's where his feelings are hurt. Like, you guys all forget that while the whole world was hating me, you guys were making content. I'm your clickbait and you're selling merch about me. Oh, I don't think so. Oh, I don't think so. I don't think so. Like, you don't want to, you want to exclude him from the friend group? Cool. You can't sit with us. But you're making a shirt, selling mugs, selling sweatpants. Stop. Stop. You're just joining in on the whatever. So these people think that you're just going to like forget about that. They think that you're just going to forget about all of that and that you've got to come back on your knee for whoever. No, you got new friends. You got new business partners. You're not concerned with them. And anybody that fouls, fumbles, or fucks up in this season, you know exactly where to put them. You're going to hand them the lighter. You're like, there's the bridge. I'll wait. It's kind of like House of Dragons and Game of Thrones where they say, uh, they tell the dragons to torch it. You're going to hand them the lighter like, here, bestie. Oh, wait, we're not besties anymore. Here you go. You torch the bridge. Okay. You guys know the saying, Dracarious. I can't say, I can't roll my R's. But you guys know the saying when they're supposed to torch what they're supposed to torch. And... You are not going to let anybody that publicly embarrassed you ever again do it ever again. I cannot. Class act. Vesti, this is about to be one of your finest seasons, okay? How do I even explain this? You are looking real respectable. And they can hate on you all day. You are a class act act okay because you're gonna stand for yours over and over and over again like there's so many stand-up things that 
like Sandoval, for example, is trying to do. They have a loan on their house, a lien against their house for like different loans for different businesses. And he offers her $3 million to buy her out. Like, hey, I'll buy the house and you can go do whatever. No, 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 no. I'm not scrambling. I'm not looking for something else. But if you don't feel safe with somebody, you don't stay in those circumstances. He's safe. He's unsafe. It's not stable. I can't trust him. But you're across the hall. You guys are sleeping across the hall. A lot of you guys know I've been in abusive relationships and I didn't stay across the hall. I took my keys and I ran and I was like, got to start over. Got to get a new wardrobe and a little dog too. These people are going to try to. It's like they're trying to name drop you right now. Like they're calling on your energy. They're pulling on your energy. You're going to have these little downloads, inklings, flashbacks about this person. That is because they're thinking about you. Okay. You are a class act. Class act. You don't see Sandoval in any scene saying, oh, she's such a bitch and I'm so glad I left her. You don't see him saying that, though he very well could because of how he's being treated. He literally says, wow, she looks really great tonight. She looks, she looks really beautiful. I hope that I can have an opportunity to have some dialogue with her so we can get some things moving and settled. You are that. You handle things with gravitas, grace. You are a class act. Even when the odds are stacked against you, which is often because everything you're going to do has longevity. That's why the Saturn energy comes piling in because what you do, it ain't going nowhere. It is timeless. It is the castle. You are the dragon. You are the whole enchilada. You are about to blow. Everybody better watch out, okay? It's just sad. Like, people are going to try to erase your whole history because of how you're handling them right now. Okay, people want to erase, and I'm just using this as, a, as an example, people want to erase Tom's whole 10 years of him being a kind person, a good friend, lending money, paying for things, gifting things. That's just who he is. You can tell that his love language is gifting things. And he's always been that friend. He's one of the reasons I've always watched the show. Thank you, LP. And yeah, makes an entrance. He loves costumes. He always makes an entrance, but he rides for his friends. No matter what. He rode for Jax. He rode for Sheena. When Sheena was at the beginning of the, you know what, when nobody could go nowhere. He, she didn't ask him for money, but she was pregnant. Her podcast had just been canceled. She didn't have any money coming in. And he sent her several thousand dollars to her PayPal without her asking. And that is what people are going to try to erase. They're going to try to erase all the good times, the good friendship, the good, the good memories. You're not going to let that happen. So as they're gallivanting around, acting like you don't matter, you don't count, da 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 kind of like what Ariana's doing to him, like, no, he's he never cared. Mm, no, he always cared. He always cared. And people will blame you for anything. You refuse to be anybody's scapegoat in this season. You don't care how crazy it's about to look that you stand up for yourself. You will not be anybody's scapegoat. You might show up late. But you make an entrance and everyone stops and stares. You got people breaking their necks to see what you're doing. And you got people bitter that you won't turn around to look at them. Okay. Yeah. Superlicious. You guys, look. And there are not a lot of good cards in this deck. This deck is nasty. I try not to pull it out very often because I never know what's going to come out. But it's always blunt. Okay. You are superlicious. This is how people see you. They're so extra. Just like they say about him. he's That's why his band is called the most extras. But leave him alone. Freaking leave him alone. I ride for him, obviously, because I love him. And I think that he's not a bad person. I just think that he messed up and he wanted to escape a relationship that he didn't have the to really get out of. And his form of escapism cost him. You guys are rocking the crown that you deserve. Okay, but all of these other people from your past and in your present, they're trying to humble you. No, they're not the judge. Okay, drop your trumpets down below.
okay? Because we know who the judge is and it ain't them. It ain't them. Only God can judge. So there's people out here smearing your name, doing spells on their little smear campaign. Well, I mean, if you want to talk to him, you could. But I'd be like, you in danger, girl. Who says that to somebody that's been helpful? That is how your people from your past are talking about your helpful people now. This whole season is about you having helpful people on standby, them being there till the wheels fall off, and attracting people like this. So the people from your past, I know damn well all the people that I fired last year are talking shit on all my new people, and that's okay. That's okay. They are talking crap about the people that are lending you a helping hand. Okay? Like I have a couple, I have a YouTuber friend that's like a little sister to me. I love her dearly. And we've gone through a lot on YouTube in these spiritual streets. And even when I'm trying to talk about her, I've learned from things that have happened to us in the past and the hate to protect her because people that I get rid of and people that I block will try to then do that to her. And I refuse. You guys, people are trying to attack those that are your helpful hand. Okay, so example, just like anybody that goes to have dinner with Tom, anybody that talks to him, she's like, oh, you're dead to me. If you go to have dinner with him on a random Wednesday, you're dead to me. That is how these people are acting. And it's not their business. Okay, it's not their business. If this person isn't being brought around her, she shouldn't care. She shouldn't care. And you guys got people that you are attracting that are not fake. They're not doing things for clout. Okay, the people that you had in your past, they cared about money. They cared about how they looked. They were very shallow. You maybe didn't realize it at the time. But the people that you have in your circle now, they are a class act. They don't care that you make an entrance. They don't care that you're a couple minutes late. Okay, they don't care that you're a couple minutes late. Drop your crowns down below if you guys are also a couple minutes late everywhere you go, okay? Because people get really mad that you guys get away with that, okay? Upgrade their friends. Oh my gosh, you guys. Out of all the shitty cards in here, we're getting all the good ones. I'm so excited for you. You are upgrading your friends, baby. Let me upgrade you. God is saying, you've been such a good earth angel you've been so good let's bring you some new friends because in 2023 you got the scissors out love it you guys are late like me i love it hi savage queen i love that i love that because i'd be late too i'll be late to my own funeral that is for damn sure that is for damn sure it just will happen i just know it will Anyways, you guys, drop your scissors down below. Affirm that your cutoff game was strong in 2023. And now your scissors are being upgraded. They're even sharper. Okay, they're even faster. But you guys are getting an upgrade. This is a new you, new friends. Affirm it below. New me, new friends. New me, who this? Drop your scissors down below because all of the fake people you saw through their mask. You saw through it. They're so salty. They're so salty. Um, if you guys are in a relationship, okay, this is going to be a specific message, but if you guys are in a relationship, there are ex people from your past that are trying to say, that your person has like an addiction to something that is not you. A lot of people are getting their karma right now. That's why they're, they're, you know, foaming at the mouth right now. And oh my gosh, these people will be revealed to you in this season. Anybody that is left because you got rid of most of them. Okay. Some of you guys got rid of all of them. Some of you are about to get rid of the last couple uses others resources there were people that were using your resources and they were exploiting and taking advantage 
Okay, they were exploiting and taking advantage. That's why I was saying if me and you had a falling out and then you go and make merch about our friendship breakup, expect a cease and desist. Okay, expect a muzzle in the mail. Okay, be expecting one of those. But that's not going to happen with us because we're besties. Like, for real, for real. That's not going to happen. These people were never transparent and they wanted to make it look so badly. I'm just like you. I'm an earth angel just like you. And I care about the people. And the they don't care. They don't care. They don't care. They love using other people's resources. And you guys are figuring out with the new upgrades that you have. Dang, these upgrades are really serving me well. Okay? You guys have people that are easily misguided, that are paying a lot of attention on you. Okay? This is because they are in winter. So I want to give you guys a warning. As things are upgrading, stay up on your protection because it will be high highs and then weird little dips, but you're going to be on top of it. As people are going through their karma, their stagnant winter season, and you are coming out of yours, they are they have tunnel vision on you. They are easily misguided. They easily misguide others. And they are obsessed and zeroed in on everything that you're doing. Because they are they're being put they're being put in timeout, basically. Okay, they are being put in timeout and they're excessively focused on you. And it's like when you have that burst of energy, it could be because the warfare is being lifted, the attacks are being lifted, or they've stopped for a minute or five. And then they zero in on you again. And you're like fighting it, duking it out in the spirit realm. You guys know what time it is. Okay, you guys know what time it is. You guys will not be deleted. You will not be copied. You cannot be replicated. There's going to be a lot of people. It's going to shock you. Okay, because you're going to be thinking, little old me. Yes, there's going to be many people trying to replicate you in this season. There's an airplane flying overhead. You are ready to soar. You defy the odds. You defy gravity. Okay, I will, I don't watch a ton of other readers. I literally only watch a couple, but the couple that I watch, like only like my little sis has content that is similar to mine that I know of. And then the other two that I watch, like not really, but I look up to them. I'm starting to notice other things happening and I'm like, oh, so you guys are going to be seeing that people that should allegedly have more recognition, that should have more clout, that should have more attention than you are struggling. And they feel like you have a genuine connection. What you got going on is lit. And so they're like, oh my gosh, how do I get that? I want to be lit too. And you're going to be kind of bummed out because you might have thought like, I don't, I didn't think I had beef with this person. I didn't think I had beef with that person. But when they're not acknowledging you and they're trying to replicate what you're doing, that's a problem. Okay. That's a problem. So I've been noticing a trend in that because it gets suggested to me. And then I'm like, what is this? Oh my gosh. What the frick? And then it's like obvious. Okay. It's like. Very obvious. What is, you know, people think we're turning up over here on this corner of the internet. So there's somebody trying to come through to wreck your home, to wreak havoc on your craft, to wreak havoc on your business. And these are haters from the sidelines that they've been watching you for a while, but they just didn't have the, the courage to try to emulate what you're doing. Okay, they didn't have the courage to emulate what you're doing. And now they're like, oh, yeah, I can do that. I'm going to try it. And you want to know why they feel comfortable trying that? Because they see so many other people doing it. Okay. So like the people that are trying to emulate me or copy me, it doesn't offend me because I'm the son. And if you are fraudulent in any capacity, 
you are going to look like a shade lamp compared to the sun. And it will never have the longevity because it's on some fake, fraudulent, dusty, crusty soapbox shit. And it's not my problem. Okay, it's not my problem. Separation. Okay, there could be somebody here thinking about getting separated. This is your guys' love message. There is somebody that you might be needing time apart from. So if, if you guys have been having issues in your relationship, you guys might you guys might be taking some time apart or discussing time apart. Yeah, you guys are going to have a heart to heart conversation. There might be some crying involved. Yeah, you're going to be releasing an ex and thinking about separating with somebody and having a heart to heart conversation because you're just over it. Okay, let me see what's going on for singles. Now, with this release your ex for those in relationships that are having issues, I feel like this means there's some healing from an ex that you're realizing is still affecting you today. And so you're going to be doing some healing from trauma or damage that an ex has caused you. And then you're going to be thinking about or discussing separation with the person that you're um, with, but having a heart to heart conversation. So I don't feel like it's all bad because you do have romantic feelings for this person. So I feel like it's probably just the, you know, the doot doo doo in the sky making it, you know what, and you guys just need to take some, take a step back from everything going on in the world because these retrogrades teach us to slow down, okay? Because things can get escalated hot and heavy really quick and you guys just need time together to disconnect from the world. OK, so again, for those of you in relationships, if you guys have been like, I'm so sick of them, I'm so freaking sick of them, fuck around and find out type of shit. You guys are putting separation on the table because you're like, you about had it. And you guys just literally need to like do the you know what that will settle a lot and then have a heart to heart. OK, you literally need to. And then have a heart to heart. That is for those of you where it's been a while, okay? If you guys are only having you-know-what once a month or once every couple of weeks, you guys need to, you guys are barely tolerating each other right now. You guys feel like roommates. You guys could be sleeping in separate bedrooms. You guys need to have a little entanglement. Then you need to have this heart-to-heart -heart because you guys need to plan a retreat. You guys need to get away. Okay, and you guys can't even have this heart to heart or have this getaway until you have some sort of intimacy. Okay. And I'm not trying to like call anybody out like, uh, but it is safe for you to love. I'm, I'm getting that like you guys are not getting enough time together or you guys are really burnt out and exhausted. You guys have children affecting your love life and it's just time to connect again. Get that bond going so you can be like, oh, now I remember why. In relationships, it is recommended in couples counseling, in couples therapy, that you are intimate at least twice a week because otherwise it makes it very hard for you to tolerate that person. Okay? My singles. You guys are feeling very passionate. You guys could be like, you guys could have been dating a lot and now you're like, forget it. I give up. I give up. And because you guys have given up and you are pursuing other passions, you are pursuing things that are doing well in your life. You're like, oh my gosh, I'm, I have all this passion, but this person isn't answering the phone. That person ghosted me. That person deleted their, deactivated their whatever. And so you have all this passion that you're going to put it somewhere different. You're going to refocus it somewhere else. And because of that, you are flirty. You are building your confidence. Okay. When our love life, literally Anita said this today, when our love life is going to like it's going down, down the rabbit hole, she was like, focus on things that are successful in your life because that will rebuild your confidence. So if your money is doing good, focus on your money because that's going to build your confidence for you to be like, and the fingers go up and they stay there for you to just not care. You feel me? And this is what's bringing you new love. This new love is 
going to show you that you deserve love, but you just don't have to focus on it. You dated, you got your, you dipped your toe in the little flirty pool, but you are going to be looking your best on your boss up, focus on the things that you already do well. Okay. We either have like a great love life and then our career is shit. It's hard to have both at the same time, but don't worry, bestie, it is coming. So my singles ready to mingle, you deserve love and you have a new one coming in that is going to go the distance, that is going to make the effort, that is going to blow your freaking socks off. They're not going to be like, oh, I'm working all night. I'm working all day. I work 24 hours in a day. I can't answer the phone. This new person is going to show you that this is how you make an effort. You're not even going to ask them. They're just going to show you. Okay, so you're just going to have to keep your head on straight and not sabotage the fact that they are this great because you're going to be like, Okay, walking green flag, what are you up to? Okay, riddle me what? You are going to be looking bomb singles because you are going to focus on what you're already good at, whether that's making money, creating art. You're going to let go of your control issues because you feel like I need to control the situation of how I'm going to meet this person. I want to meet them here or it's got to be like this. And as soon as you let go of this, and you stay optimistic that it'll happen when it happens, I feel like you guys are going to be getting engaged this year. Okay, I feel like you guys are going to be getting engaged this year for those of you that have been like on the market for a little while. And it's going to require trust. So for singles and relationships, there is forgiving and learning that has to take place. We have true love and trust. Okay, so if you guys know that you love your person, those in a relationship, you're like, I love them so much, but they're driving me absolutely mad. Trust. Rebuild that. Retreat. You guys need a, a staycation. You guys need to get away to, together. You guys can renew your vows. Go dance the night away. Like, you guys need something spontaneous that you don't normally do. Get a babysitter. Call a nanny. Drop them off at your mom's house. Do whatever you got to do to get a freaky little night in because you just need it. Okay, it's going to solve a lot. Don't worry, I'm not a doctor, but I can prescribe love. Okay, it will work. It always works. It'll help you guys lower your guard. Right now, you guys are like, I'm right. And they're like, no, I'm right. And you're like, no one's letting their guard down. So drop the panties. Okay, drop the pants. And it's going to let the issues get solved okay and so there's forgiving and learning on both sides for relationships and those that are single you're gonna have to forgive those that hurt you in the past same with those of you in a relationship that are like you're gonna be realizing that an ex did more damage than you realized and that it's affecting parts of your love life and it has creeped in it has creeped in as you release and heal the past you experience more love in present moments, okay? There could be, for those of you in a relationship, say there's other people getting married or having a baby and you're like, oh, those milestones didn't go well for me. Your person could come up to you and say, you know, I was thinking that like we should try again or we should go, you know, renew our vows in Vegas or something and you're gonna be like, what? Those are those moments to appreciate because as you're seeing everybody else get their their glow on in different milestones that went maybe south or sour for you there is somebody there that really wants to make that better and then for those of you in relation uh for those of you that are single you letting go of unrequited love you letting go of feeling like you got to chase and what is wrong with them? And why are they always working? What is going on? What are they doing? Yeah. You guys don't gotta, you guys don't gotta worry about that anymore. Somebody's gonna come in and they're gonna be feeling far from basic. Okay. Far from basic. Lee says, that's me, self-sabotage. Your willpower is shifting. Everything you got going on, bestie, is shifting. Growth. Wow, surrender. This is your guys' advice. 
your seeds. They're growing, whether you really see them or not. This is how people see you. They see that what you're doing has roots. Okay, they see that. But as you're planting things, you can't like rip it up out of the soil and be like, it didn't grow yet. Is it about to sprout? We have to leave it alone. Plant it and then, you know, detach. You guys have growth. Everyone sees it. And in this season, you're going to be realizing and seeing what everybody else sees in you. This is going to shift your willpower and the way that you surrender. Sometimes it's easier to say yes. Some of us are not at, not good at accepting love, especially if we have CPTSD, which is, you know, a form of post-traumatic stress from dealing with narcissistic abuse. And that is where we are in fight or flight. We are in survival mode at all times. The middle of our brain is being used at all times. And it is hard for us to laugh all the time without feeling guilty, eat without feeling guilty. Some of you guys might like eat really fast because you don't, you feel bad if you're enjoying it. Some of you guys might not laugh as much as you want to laugh because you feel bad about it. You guys could stop yourself from love or stop yourself from having fun. So you're really going to be working on surrendering and not fighting the love that you have coming in, not fighting the help that you have coming in. You are attracting helpful people because your cutoff game was so strong last year. The people that wreaked havoc, the people that didn't appreciate you, they're going to be looking through a window wishing that they were still a part of your life. Okay. Wishing and hoping. Speak up and brazen. People are going to be acting like you're sassy. You're so disrespectful. You're not having that. The days where you would just keep the peace. Just to keep the peace when you know they're dead wrong. Those days are gone. Those days are gone. You are going to speak up. And you are going to be heard. And there is going to be. A applause behind you. Okay. I love that. It's about to be a really lusty season for everyone. And it's going to be full of passion and fire and vigor and conviction. Do not let anybody that is tunneled in on you, just focused on you, get you down. Because certain people that you used to care about you might hear through the grapevine that they are talking a lot of ish about you on their social media, that they are talking about you a lot in their new group of friends. They're going places trying to run into you, okay? These people are going places trying to run into you, and that is like <laughs> the last thing that they should want because you have people now that truly care about your well-being that will answer the phone when you call. You know what I realized with my exes that I didn't realize until now and that I'm going to close this out. When I was with my exes and bad things would happen, I never actually felt protected. I never actually felt safe. Like if somebody was going to like jump us, which actually did happen with some of my exes, like we were jumped and we had to fight and brawl. I never felt like they were fighting to, sorry, I have like a hair that keeps getting in my face. I never felt like they were fighting to like protect me. They were fighting so they could go look like a badass. They weren't fighting to like keep me safe. And I was in a lot of different relationships like that. Those people weren't willing to jump when I needed them. And there were times where I really needed them. When I go through things now, whether it's a flat tire or, you know, I need to go to the hospital. Like I've had a situation where I was working so much overtime that I needed to go to the hospital in the middle of my shift. And my husband flew there, flew, like got there so freaking fast, got me up out of my job and rushed me to the hospital. I was like, whoa, like I feel safe. I had, um, a situation where I got a flat tire and he's like, where are you at? I'm coming to get you right now. Like safe, not, not answering the phone, not, um, answering text messages. 
And it took him coming into my life for me to realize what I never had with my exes. I had the, I already had abandonment issues and I didn't, they weren't there to be like, I'll shield you. I'll protect you. They cared about their own ass. And when I was in jail the last time, them not answering the phone, like that stuff stays with you. Even if you don't think about it all the time, it truly stays with you. Thinking about times when you were in dangerous situations where you you need your person to protect you. Like if I'm with my person and he's looking around and he thinks something is unsafe, he's like, go over here until I figure out what this over here is. And that's how it should be. Somebody watching your back. Somebody that speaks up to you. You know, when my family was trying to destroy my wedding, trying to destroy my marriage, on my first date of being married, they sent out my mug shots to everybody in my family, trying to embarrass me for their smear campaign. He literally messaged them like, I'm going to pray for you because you don't know what you're missing out on and how proud she is of her sobriety. But it seems like it will never be good enough. But if you're trying to embarrass her, you're going to need to try a little bit harder. Um, she's not yours to kick around anymore. And so you guys need somebody not only to speak up for you or not only to protect you, but to also speak up for you. And this is something none of my exes would do. They would never stand up to my parents. They would never stand up to my family as they were ganging up on me, teaming up on me, bullying me, making me the scapegoat always making me the butt of their jokes. You guys have people that are not only going to do this in action, they're going to do this in word. And I really want you guys to embrace the growth because you attracted that. Bestie, you attracted that. You prayed for that. You manifested that. And it's really going to change your willpower and how you look at your relationship. It's really going to change how you look at these new friends that you've attracted, these new business partners that you've attracted, these new peers, these new people that you're collaborating with. And you guys deserve that. No more um, public embarrassment. Okay, the people that you have that, are, that are, were brought by God, the people that you were meant to attract, they are not going to want you to walk around looking like a fool. Okay, they are not. I had an ex that was so salty with me that I was getting more attention than him, that he drugged me at a party, and things went real south real quick. And then I had, I'm trying to think, I had another ex, longtime ex, that decided he would give me too much of certain things and that way he, I would be incapac like like in, what's the word incapacitated I forget but you guys know what I'm saying I would literally be like incapacitated like over here and he's like hitting on my friends trying to hook up with my friends while I'm in the same vicinity like here take four of these here take eight of these and I'm like woo go big or go home and I would just take it I was easily misguided. So you guys are going to be realizing where you've been easily misguided and how you are so much different now. How you are leaps and bounds from the person that you used to be and you are working out these trust issues. You are working out your how you pray for yourself, amping up your protection like you deserve the very best. Not people where you got to beg for their love and they're always committed to misunderstanding you. You guys don't deserve that. Yeah, these 304s ain't loyal. No, they are not. No, they are not. I don't know why I'm shuffling this because that's not a good that's not a good deck. That's not a good deck. Okay, let's see if we get one more love message. Playfulness. Oh my gosh, I love this for you guys. Okay, this will be the last card. I promise, 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 promise. Okay, playfulness. This is you guys. To recapture romance, allow your inner youthful spirit of fun to shine. Have you gotten so serious with life? Like, no, I'm on my glow up. 
I'm on my boss up. I gotta focus, focus. Yes, you're, you are focusing on that sometimes more than love and that's okay. But remember why people fall in love with you. Okay. Remember that even though you are a lion, you are a playful kitten. Like people really adore this about you, how playful you are. This is going to recapture everyone's attention. You feel me? All right, you guys. I love you guys so, so much. Don't forget to smash the you know what. Hit the bell. Duh. Let me know how this resonated with you because I love getting to know you guys through the comments. It helps me channel messages better to where they are super tailored for you. If you guys are looking for pick a cards, ad free exclusive content from me where um, you guys get to vote on the content that you see. Patreon link is down below. And yeah, just thank you guys for helping me during this live stream. And thank you for all of your love and support. I look forward to reading the live chat replay. Like even though I don't get to see all of it while I'm channeling, I do get to see it after. And I just, I love reading your guys' funny comments and I just love you guys. And thank you Savage Queen and Randon for helping me during this message. And what else? I look forward to reading your guys' comments and I'll see you guys in the next one. Toodles.